What's up, everybody out there? This is your boy, Dev of War Room Sports. I'd like to welcome you guys to episode number 216 of our podcast, The War Room. In this edition, we talk about Sam Bradford and his latest ACL tear. We talk about RG3 and how he might be losing the fans in Washington, D.C. Of course, we talk a lot about Floyd Mayweather and 50 Cent and this whole literacy thing or lack thereof. Uh, we talked about the Kevin Love trade, and lastly, we talked, as we do every week, with college football insider, Miami Hurricanes insider for Sports Talk Florida, Fred Perdue. He gave us his games of the week. So uh, make sure you sit back, relax, grab you some popcorn if you need to, and listen to episode 216 of The War Room. Peace. Blog Talk Radio. I'm back. Welcome to The War Room. We got Dez, Kill, Jimmy, PJ, B off in the hot block commander. How you wanna end up wanna do all the show and keep the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level, full with the topic, sort of like the rubber when it's game time, they like the fat five doing prime time, sports conglomerates to speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The four for twenty-six saw the war in Kuwait, it's the war room with five nights. Sports fans, your boys are back at the table, and that can only mean one thing. You are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports. On the WRS Podcast Network, I'm Devin McMillan. Jimmy the Blueprint Williams is off the pup list. And back on the active roster, and B. Austin, the hot block commander, is here as usual, commanding the block. NFL preseason wraps up this week, and there have been some big hits, big injuries, and even some literary issues, and some, some, you know, some literacy issues that... Uh, we got to deal with in a week of sports, so we'll discuss it all. So uh, get prepared. Join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Or join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports so you can discuss them with us as well. Um, you can also call us directly when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech hotline at 323-410-0012. Before we get started, we got to remind you guys to check out the great shows on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Get there from our main site, warroomsports.com, or get there directly at wrspn.com. You'll find shows such as the Broad Street Line with the homies, uh, Roy Burton and Chris Domingo, uh, Tissue and the Tape Podcast, Pop Spot Sports Radio with Modi and Doc, and a whole lot more. You can also check the listings at thatsradio.com for airtimes of all your favorite WRSPN sports shows, including our show, The War Room, that airs on Sundays and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. And again, that's fatsradio.com, P-H-A-T-Z, pretty hot and tempting, Z, radio.com. Uh, what's good, General? What's up? Yo, We're back. I, be like, I, be wanting, I be wanting to read the intro sometimes, but let me, let me get your opinion on, on this. What's good? What's good? <laughs> for, what, what's good sports fan? Your boy, boys are. Yo, man, you out of yeah. it. Tiblet. Yo, this is always. He, he start off the show on ten. Blueprint, what's yeah, up, man? You back with us? You was on that uh so that injured so list bad. last week. Yeah, I'm back. Good. I'm ready to talk my ish, man. I'm out here moving with the elegance of an African elephant, man. But I'm excited. I want to talk some sports. I want to talk some uh, education. I want to talk about everything. B, let's go. All right, well, let's do that then, all right? Everybody, these are the stories that happened this week while y'all were on that grind. And, of course... While y'all on the grind is brought to you by Direct TV. If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, including that NFL Sunday ticket, which you will need in about a week and a half, go to our website, warroomsports.com, click on the Direct TV logo, order yourself a better TV experience at a discounted Warroom Sports sign up rate. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta have Direct TV. I actually talked to Direct TV today. Definitely got me some discounts, but that's another story. Fellas, in the world of basketball and hip-hop, love and hip-hop, basketball and hip-hop, whatever you want to call it, y'all homie Lance Stevenson (laughs) 
a.k.a. Born Ready, actually dropped some bars over the popular Bobby Schmurter's hot N-word track. Um, what, what did y'all think? Before we play the clip for everybody else, what did y'all think about Lance's bars? I've been hearing a lot of comparisons to former basketball players who's tried to go down this uh, this path. What did y'all think about um, it, it? It landed somewhere between uh, Allen Iverson, a.k.a. Jewels, and um, a.k.a. And, uh, Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Kobe, Kobe Bryant. It wasn't quite as Yo. hot as my man Shazam Twism. And if y'all don't know who Shazam Twism is, he did a couple bars with the late, great Christopher Frank White Wallace, Biggie Small. Get your hip hop history together. He was a great basketball player, uh, but yeah, that's where I put him. I put him somewhere between Kobe and AI in terms of ball. Yo, man, I, I think he was, uh, you know, he was closer to the top than the bottom, man. Yo, you know, Shaq did a song with Biggie, Jay Z, and I. How about that? That's a whole other thing, but. Yeah. Shaq but anyway, does, that make, does that make Shaq nicer? Does that make Shaq nice just because of the company he kept? I, I mean, Shaq, Shaq, Shaq was the king of getting features, so you don't realize just because I honestly think that AI is the best to do it in terms of an athlete rapper, yo. AI, even though AI bars were kind of like on Prodigy, like he was really like catching bodies and you know he's <laughs> people with a magic and all kinds of stuff like that. Like you could tell that AI can really rap, and I, you can also tell that Lance can rap. Like it's not like you know LeBron. LeBron sounds foolish when he tries. You know what I mean? Like in certain <laughs> catches, he sounds foolish. But, like Chris Webber sounds a little you foolish. Know how to rap. Although Chris Webber can produce, but he sounded foolish trying to rap. I mean, Ron Artest, you know, he's from QB, so you already know what it is. But uh, <laughs> Dad, you, you can get let the people hear Lance because Lance wasn't half bad. All right, well, you know, here's Lance uh, spitting his on the on the the real ends track from uh, Bobby Schmurda. Get up for a Hit the weight room, then I hit the gym. Started from the bottom, it was either sink or swim. swim. No hesitation, make a move, then I'm at the rim. rim. I got tunnel vision, all I'm trying to do is win. New year, new money, so I'm coming for them. Niggas hate, man, they ain't got nothing on them. Two chains, now I'm stunting on them. See a sinner in the lane, and I'm dunking on them. Ah. What? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> So props uh, to him also because he's rapping about his real life, like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do gotta respect also, that. You do gotta respect that. Also, because he's in the lane Jack. and he's dunking on him. Yeah, Captain, Captain Jack, <laughs> Stephen Jackson had some. Uh, oh, he had mixtapes and albums. Oh dropping. my god! But then again, he Yo, might have been Let me tell you so. something. Yeah, he had he had well, shows. He, 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 he choked out y'all. other basketball players. No, I know for a fact that Dev has not heard Captain Jack. And Jimmy, you probably have, but Captain Jack is so bad that he's not worth bringing up. Like I, I my mind made me forget about dude. Man. Yo, but yo, he's rapping. He's putting in gun work, like. But the thing is, that he yo, Stephen Jack, I believe him though, Jeff. About, I believe him. Yo, laying the murder game down. I believe Captain Jack though. Something yeah, wrong with so that dude. Yeah, so I, I, I rapping about dunking on people and the hesitation dribble and crossing ah. cross over. You know what I mean? So shot the Lance. Though. Lance, yeah. He's better than Mike's son. <laughs> Mike son, all he rap about is Mike. <laughs> like, yo, yeah, he rap about wearing Mike. Like, so what? Like, like, is that really an accomplishment that you wear mics in your pop? Is Mike? Like, what are you really saying? Mike. <laughs> like, like who? Like, who are you really stunting on? Like, you talk about wearing mics. Like, oh. your pop is Mike. So hold on, though. In a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, and I know y'all understand. Yo, Dick and your dad is probably the worst. Like, that's yo, is that wrong that. with that pause? Like, well, phrasing it that way it is. But, yo, you don't outwardly do it, though. Every little boy yeah. that looks up to the top. But, yo, yo you, you just don't I wear a mic. Anyway, man, yo, you want to hear some terrible rapping, though? Uh, <laughs> roll, roll with us, because you know we got it. We got it. Roll with us, because you know we got it. We got it. It's a damn shame that you... Yeah, I can't even go through. Oh, man. That yo. was LeBron James. You want to hear the worst rap I've ever heard on from yeah. an athlete? Mm-hmm. Huh. I was on the run of town the other night. I asked my boy to down they say, right. Hey, evil, roll us we are the sight. Then we park, rock, and tipsy pop. Well, what do you Yo, you know what? He, 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 he's at the bottom, yo. 
That definitely is the worst, yo. That's, he don't even have rhythm or soul in that. Like, he's the worst. Yeah. Neither do his game. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, and he gonna mic sound up for you, Talking all that shit won't face it. Louis backpack, Tricky Jacob. On that throwback, yay shit. Rockin' ordained basic. Great A shit. Cushion Red Wag. Yeah. Rockin' Orange J's. Ba- yo, yo, you're popping. Why are you talking about wearing <laughs> no, he's cousins? terrible. <laughs> He is terrible. Mike's son is terrible, but at least he did kind of ride and flow with the beat. Yo, your man, your man Norbit, a.k.a. the quarterback of the Washington <laughs> professional football team, yo, he needs to lose his, yo, he needs to lose his card. He should never he play that card because he's down with them. <laughs> he's down with them. All right, well, shout out to the them. man, to, to y'all man born ready. Um, yo, and sad news, I hate when we got to do stories like this, but uh, uh, Morgan State University football player, he was um, uh, hospitalized after a workout. He ended up dying. Um, he died on Sunday. He was an 18-year-old freshman lineman by the name of Marquise Meadow. Uh, I believe he uh, collapsed in practice, and he was hospitalized and ended yeah. up dying. I don't know if he collapsed, but he was uh, kind of disoriented during the workout, which was like two weeks ago. Um, and they thought he was improving, but on Saturday he took a turn for the worse. So I'm not really sure what the actual reason is for him dying. But he was, but you know, he passed on Sunday. So uh, you know, condolences to his family. He was a freshman defensive lineman uh, from Washington D.C. So um, shout out to him, man. Y'all know how it is. No, I hate them two it's, days it's when it's like 95 degrees. Yeah, I hate those stories How you because feel it's 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 terrible, man. It's like, yo, I understand what the coaches are trying to do, but they have to do a better job, man. Because you know, it, it's a sad story. It's a sad. I mean, yo, getting ready to start college as a career, black, whole as life. A black man, you know? as a yeah. black man in America, we gotta watch out for diabetes, hypertension, uh, police officers. Two a day during football season, like there's a lot of stress. Man. A lot of stress. I agree. A lot of man. stuff to kill us. No doubt. We got everything kind of a sickle cell. The only thing we don't catch is ALS. But no, mind. I'm sorry. Uh oh. Uh oh. But um. All right. So yeah, condolences to to his family and you know to anybody that was close to him. All right, y'all remember the undis- the former undisputed middleweight champ Jermaine Taylor. The, the overly aggressive dude I know what happened. was real mad at Bernard Hopkins when they fought. Like, dude, you should just be angry in the ring. Well, anyway, he was arrested back on Tuesday night in, uh, at his home in Arkansas in connection with the shooting of his cousin. Wait, before he was taken into custody. You know, they booked him and everything. They said that the situation was, you know, they were in the house having a domestic dispute, an argument, and he shot the dude multiple times. So what in the hell could they have been arguing about that would cause someone to shoot their cousin multiple times? B. Austin, you want to get your War Room Sports speculation on? You shot your cousin? Yes, this, <laughs> in front this of your is, face? This is uh, something for our listeners that are, that are new to the show. This is something that we do. Uh, my viewpoint is not representative necessarily of War Room Sports, but this or is just life. what I speculate that <laughs> happened. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's correct. Um, so I'm going to start here. You, you gentlemen know that how you look in this world oftentimes has a bearing on how successful you are, even if you're great at what you do. Like if Sam Cassell didn't look like E.T., he would be a Hall of Famer because he's better than Joe Dumars easily. But because he looks how he looks, he can't be marketed. Well, I speculate that back in the day, Back in the day, Jermaine Taylor had some interactions with one Mr. Bernard Hopkins. This is before they fought. Before they fought. And Bernard kind of took the young boy under his wing, saw the athletic talent, saw the handwork, worked with him a little bit. And then, you know, <laughs> Jermaine's family was around. This particular cousin was around when that, when that happened and when that went down. And he saw that, hey, listen, Jermaine, no matter how athletic you are, you ain't got no work. The old head. So then they get in the ring. Bernard chills a little bit, beats him up twice, gets robbed because Bernard is ugly, and they don't want an ugly kid. That's just the bottom line. It's very difficult to market Bernard Hopkins and all of his greatness because 
as the closer the pictures are, the closer the cameras are, the less fans that you have interested in what's being said. They're caught up in the way he looks. So the judges understood this, and, and the fix was in. They said, it's easier to market Jermaine Taylor as our champion, so we're just going to rob Bernard. He's ugly. He's used to getting robbed. And what happened was that Jermaine was in a, in a dispute with his cousin, and his cousin said, yo, Jermaine, now you know, boy, you ain't winning that fight. I was just going to be honest with you in the Arkansas tone, and that was it. He got his gun. <laughs> he Jermaine, got his gun. Jermaine took offense to it and shot that dude, man. It was yeah, actually um, um, two cats, too. I guarantee it. Um, his cousin was struck multiple times, but he is alive but in serious condition. The other dude didn't get hit, but he said Jermaine Taylor fired at him several times and missed. So, um, right. yeah, they said something that set him off. My story is a lot shorter. They were arguing about something stupid, and dude said, don't make me get Kelly Pavlik on you, and he kind of <laughs> lost it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Kelly Pavlik dusted Jermaine Taylor's boots on multiple occasions. So he took offense to that, man, and, you know, tried to lay the murder game down. But my thing is this, though, man, like on a serious note, Yo, what is wrong with people? Like, this gentleman, he, he has a title shot that was, you know, that was supposed to have been announced, but I don't know what's going to happen now. But, like, you have yeah, a lot of Yeah, two weeks lose. ago, there. You're, you're not just some <laughs> random dude that's walking around. Like, and I understand that you get hot and you get upset, but, yo, we just got to be smarter. Like, too many people walking around, man, playing checkers in a chess game, man. Like, you got to be smarter than that, man. It's like... I don't care how upset you get, man. If that dude is not, like, putting you in an immediate danger or your family, like, yo, what are you doing? Yeah. Jermaine Taylor. All right, man. This last story that happened while you all were on the grind, man. This one's a crazy one. Josh Shaw, uh, defensive back from USC. Um, he was in the news <laughs> this weekend, but when it all started, he was a hero. He came uh, back to campus with two high ankle sprains, but he told his coaches that uh, Saturday night he jumped from a second-story balcony of an apartment complex to save his seven-year-old nephew who was struggling in the swimming pool. <laughs> he, said his, he said his nephew didn't know how to swim. So that was the story they were going with. Early in the week, this guy was a hero, but then Coach Sarkeesian started getting calls from other sources saying that this story might not be true. They heard that he his name came up in some police questioning. Um, they said something about a domestic dispute that may have happened in that apartment, and the, the description of the man with dreadlocks jumping off of the balcony fit, you know, Josh Shaw actually fit that description, so he was... Not charged with anything, but he was a person of interest, put it like that, for, for questioning. So finally, after a few days, he broke down and told the truth to his coaches, saying that what he told them was indeed a lie, and that's not how he he uh, messed his ankles up. No further stuff has come out that I know about what actually happened. But, but what do you guys think about this story? It's like he comes well, out. Yeah, let's just get this right out of the way. Yeah, get that out <laughs> How do you no, make Josh, up a superhero no, no, story? No, you know they're going to no, put this back, on national news. You know that. You're a, a big time college football player. Uh, you're saving a kid's life. You jump two stories to save a life. That's the story you're going with? <laughs> you're a scumbag, B. <laughs> All right, well, here, here's my thing. Like, yo, it's funny because initially I'm like, yo, this boy is so stupid. But, like, the more I read about the situation, like, I kind of feel sorry for dude because he seems like a big kid who made a mistake and didn't realize when he was making a mistake how serious he can get. You know what I mean? Like, he was trying to tell a little lie to keep himself out of trouble. And it got, like, went it went national and, you know, he got himself in a, in a, in a whole heap of trouble. Oh, so He compounded whatever oh. it was he really did. And made it even yeah, worse. Yeah, absolutely, like, absolutely. He's but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, be Austin, like, right he, Yeah, but what I'm saying, be Austin, is he didn't carry it on like that long. He, he came clean or whatever. He made a mistake, like you know what I'm saying. So I hope that you know he can move forward with his life because he seemed to be a good dude from all accounts. Now 
I don't know him Yo, personally. He, this he, one he could thing be a scumbag. You tell a lie, but when you tell a lie and you're a part of something wrong, but you try to tell the lie to make yourself look good like the hero, that's double jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. He drew on that just one. Tell a reg- just that tell a regular part. story. So, yo, you could have eat Jimmy, you could have easily said, yo, coach, my bad. I went to the basketball court. I know we weren't supposed to hoop just close to the season, and I was hooping, and I ran into one of them and one dudes, and they hit me with the yay, yay, y'all. <laughs> and uh, I, I twisted both my ankles at the same time. That, I don't respect it. Like, I, I wouldn't even be mad at him. And, and when he tried to say, I saved the day, my cousin was drowning. So I left. I left off of a two step. No, nah, B. Yo, you a scumbag. Yo, he could have just said. I know. He could have just said, "Yo, I'm young and dumb, and I'm a college dude, so I jumped off a balcony because somebody dared me to do it. I'm stupid." Yeah, oh, but you could have said mm-hmm. that. You could get away yeah, with being stupid I, I, when you're young. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just think that he made it like a mistake, man. Like I, I don't think he's a bad. I, I don't know. Again, I don't know. I can't say that for sure, but you know, hopefully, dude gets his act together because I, it's one of them things where it's not like something off of like a Ferris Bueller, like a TV show where he tried to tell a little <laughs> lie, <laughs> and it got out of control, and he's like, yo, oh, you man, don't I know, man. Listen, then he realized, you like, yo, I gotta get out of this. When you're under twenty-four. You do a lot of dumb stuff. You do. You Absolutely, do dumb and that's stuff. the thing. And that's the thing. That's that's yeah. my whole thing. Like, you know. Hopefully he can rebound from this, you know, and it won't. I mean, it's going to carry. It's going to go with him for the rest of his life because of the position he was in. He, he didn't play for like uh, community. He played for like USC. You know what I mean? So and he was a team captain. He was named captain. A team he captain, like, man, and a five-year <laughs> player at that. So <laughs> five years senior. So you know he's getting his degree. Probably already got it. Captain, yeah, he probably already got it. My man, my man, like didn't didn't think it would be uh, that crazy, but you know. Well, yes, he can read. All right. So uh, that's what happened this week while y'all were on the grind. Jimmy, let everybody know who's having a birthday this week. Absolutely. It's time to get these birthday shout-outs. And the World Birthdays are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank. For an effective online presence, top-quality, results-driven websites at incredibly affordable prices. Financing options are available. You can put something on it. Visit DigitalExtremeTech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for a discount rate, make sure you tell them that War Room Sports sent you. Time to get Yeah, I like how you read that drop. You already know. You know what I mean? No Floyd. Yo, um... Darren McFadden turns 27. The often hurt Darren McFadden. You already know. Um, the, 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 I don't know whether he's. The, I don't know whether this guy is overrated or underrated. But Jim Tomey turns 44. I think he may be both. He's one of those guys, borderline Hall of Famers, who's going to get in because, by all accounts, he's clean. So he, they're, they're definitely yeah. going to make a. You know, they're going to put him. They ain't in the catching. They put it like that. Yeah, they're gonna send a message to everybody else and put him in first time. So they're gonna let a bum, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let I, a bum in when it shouldn't be in. Nah, it's like when well, I watch his career, and I'm like, part of me feels yeah. he's kind of overrated because he did put up the crazy home yeah. run numbers. He struck out a lot, but I mean, like most home run hitters do. But he just never seemed to be like the impact player that uh, the other home run hitters were. If that makes any sense. Never, but never anyway. struck that fear that the other dudes. Yeah, struck. exactly. Yeah. But he put up, he did hit, yeah. he did knock the ball to park a lot. So Jim Tomey turns forty-four. Let me let me ask uh, y'all let me ask y'all baseball minds y'all baseball minds this Tommy or or Matt McGuire. What's the question which in terms of like who's the best player? <laughs> which one was more impactful? I mean, Mark McGuire. Most people walking up yeah. the, uh, the street couldn't even tell you who Jim Tommy is. Mark McGuire, I love him, I hate him. Him and Sammy Sosa saved baseball. That was the most exciting yeah, at least summer that, I remember. At least for that time. small period of time. It, it that was summer was amazing, yo. And, fellas, I don't know what this is, but I'm watching on my monitor the four letters, and they're doing something else about MLK up in Philly. I'm watching them, like, at practice and Coach Dunn going over film. and So we're going to have to get in touch with oh, Coach, yeah, Coach Dunn and see what's going on. Shout, shout out to Coach Dunn. That's, that's, the, that's our people. But uh, with that being said, man, um, arguably – the greatest mixed martial artist of all time, Anderson Silva, turns 32. 
Ruth Riley. Yeah, very, very arguable. Ruth <laughs> Riley, 35. I mean, no, he, he, it's, it's really, I mean, there's only a couple people you would put ahead of Anderson Silva, arguably, and that probably be one of the Gracies just because of, you know, what they meant to the sport. But yeah, in terms impact of the on sport the sport. That's yeah. where it is. Yeah, since the sport has gotten to where it is, there isn't anyone with more success than Anderson Silva. But anyway, um, Ruth Riley is 35. Anybody got anything you want to say about Ruth Riley? Nope. I just got to say MLK after the first documentary. Now they got nice practice uniforms and they're practicing at a nice Hey, place, listen, man, man, it's all about exposure, man. It's all about uh-huh. exposure. Save the babies, man. <laughs> With that being said, man, those are our birthdays. Shout to at Casey Mac My on birthday. Twitter. I'm pretty Yay. sure. We're going to have a random player that we missed. And, we, you know, we always appreciate Casey, uh, Casey Mack. Uh, Lou Pinella, Casey Mack already chimes in. <laughs> Luke Pinella's birthday. So shout to Luke Pinella. Luke. Shout to KC Matt. We wait for that, homie. But uh, you know, those are the birthdays. All right. All right, everybody, y'all know the drill. Y'all can check out our website at warroomsports.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for the War Report. That's our weekly newsletter. Uh, the news of the week is that all of the shows on WRSPN Network, the I, well, that's kind of repetitive, but WRSPN, which is the World of Sports Podcast Network, all of the shows are now on iTunes, so make sure you subscribe to that iTunes feed so you can listen to any of the shows on the network at your own time, on your iPad, iPhone, iPod, i whatever. All right, but for general inquiries, if you want to talk to us about the, the company, the show, or to inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities, just email us, info at warroomsports.com. While you're on the site, click on the memorabilia tab, buy you some merchandise, click the blog tab, read our articles on the All's Fair and Sports and War blog, click the respective icons to like our Facebook page where we talk sports all day, every day. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our iTunes podcast, that's the individual one for this show. Watch our videos at warroomsportstv.com. Listen to our network, WRSPN.com, and to download our free War Room Sports mobile app uh, to get everything I just mentioned right there on the go. Join the JW Philly Realty chat room right now during the show at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room to enter the chat room. Sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't want to do that, you can sign in through your Facebook or Twitter accounts. And while you're there, click follow so you can get updates and reminders about the show. Every week we'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and the chat room during the show. But to call in and speak with us, you can dial the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. But if you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to holler at us, and we'll try to get to you to see what's up. But right now we're going to talk some hot topics. And hot topics, Jimmy, are brought to you by Aldebo. Yes, sir. You already know. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know about reading, uh, getting your Floyd on while you're on mute. Anyway, um, <laughs> if your schedule is too hectic to read as much as you want, <laughs> try audio books and kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. All you have to do is visit Audible and sign up for your free trial at audibletrial.com slash Sports. In no time, you can get a free book. Listen, audibletrial.com slash Warroom Sports, and when you sign up with our link, make sure you use our link because we set it up with Audible for you to get a free book. So your first book can be free. You can try the service to see if you like it, and if you like it, you continue on. Um, right now I'm reading this new book. It's crazy. It's called 40 Acres. It's a book about um, a group of successful black people getting together and bringing back in, um, slavery to enslave white people for their uh, use. So, um, <laughs> Is it called Revenge? Of course, <laughs> Oh, it's called 40 Acres. Um, Is that illegal? Uh, Are you allowed to read that? <laughs> Should be called but anyway, it's a, it's a crazy story. It's a, and I know it sounds like real wild, and it is real wild, but, you know, and uh, from what I hear, it's the option to be a movie probably in like four years. So, But the book's already on Audible. So audibletrial.com slash Um A lot of great sports books, but get you a free one. That's all. All right. Well, first, we definitely want to give a shout-out to the Little League World Series American champions, Jackie Robinson West, uh, the team from Chicago. Um, they went back and, and, and avenged their loss to the Monstars from Nevada and actually got into that uh, world championship game against uh, South Korea, was it? And it was no days against those guys. But, you know, I, I like how these, these kids handled themselves, man. There was no, like, once that championship game was over, you know, 
they still, I mean, they still had smiles on their face. And at this level, you can still appreciate that. Like, you know, once you get a little older, you definitely have to know, like, the, the, the object of the whole thing is winning. Um, it's nothing wrong with being a little upset. And it wouldn't have been anything wrong with them being upset, but they show great sportsmanship. Like, they yeah. didn't go out. I can't even front. Even the team from Philly a few times, they showed up the umpires a few times on some bad calls. They were bad calls, but that's something that you don't want to learn or teach kids early in life because that attitude is going to follow them for however far they go in their particular sport. So I just want to give the Jackie Robinson West kids a shout-out for the way they handled themselves after the game. Like, you know, they don't they, they love they their accomplishment, man. They, they were, and I was proud definitely, of them as well. Definitely salute to them, man. Salute to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely, um, definitely salute to them. Salute to the city for uh, taking care of them when they came back home. Everything yeah. was good and positive. You probably you did a little I mean? too like, much, but it's all good. Probably, but at the end of the day, man, you got to celebrate that considering the way celebrate that uh, the babies. people, yeah, people look at your city. You know what I mean? They think everybody in your city loves Sosa, but that's not the case. Um, there is some good going on there, so, you know, sh- salute to them. Yeah. All right, so um, the Kevin Love trade finally went down. Uh, we kind of knew what it was for about a month. Um, we knew who the players were probably going to be. And when I say players, I mean the teams involved because it was a three-team trade. Uh, but it's official now because, of course, we had to wait for Andrew Wiggins because he had signed his contract about a month ago. So, of course, we know that the Cleveland Cavaliers, who by a lot of people's accounts are now title favorites or at least Eastern Conference title favorites, favorites they get Kevin Love, uh, one of the, the league's best power forward. The Timberwolves get number one overall pick in this year's draft, Andrew Wiggins, number one pick in last year's draft, draft Anthony Bennett, and they get uh, forward Thaddeus Young from the Sixers and a $6.3 million trade exception. So they did very well in a trade that they probably had to do because Love was going to leave uh, after the season anyway. Um, the 76ers, which to me, you know, because, of course, y'all, y'all know we're all from Philly, and we all know that the the, the fans are going to complain about everything, but I'm glad that they even got up in this trade because – Frankly, they had no leverage, so to come out with anything yeah. was pretty yeah. good. Especially they you know, were in, their, in their destroy and rebuild phase right now, they got a 2015 first round draft choice. Now that choice is originally from the Miami Heat, so I think it's it, it's dependent on where they end. So it might not be a high pick, depending on what the Heat do this year. Um, guard Alexi Shved and forward Luke Richard Mbalmute. They got all those guys from Minnesota. Alex, Alexi Shved, to me, could be a sleeper in this whole thing. Not saying he's going to be a superstar, but given the opportunity, nice. his skill set lends nice. him to being able to have a productive career. You know what I'm saying? He, at, at, Looking at what the Sixers are doing now, they want to lose games, so they could possibly get him his minutes next year. He could start at the two. Or, you know, once the team gets better – he can be that backup two guard coming off the bench, but he he's not a bad player. Um, you can't go by his statistics, but if you've watched him play, you know. So what do you guys yeah. think of this trade? Like uh, of the three teams, we all know Cleveland. You know, this was one of those okay, get us over the hump type moves. Even though we didn't know how bad the hump was because they haven't even played a game with LeBron being back yet, but we all know what it was for them. Um, where do you think it puts them? Do you do you make them the favorites in the Eastern Conference? Do you make them the favorites to win no. the NBA title? What do you think? No, uh, I put them. I definitely put them top four uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, that ain't hard to be in here, but still, um, I respect I respect the talent that they have, but I'm still gonna go kind of old school and say number one, I haven't seen them play. And number two, it's a little disrespectful to the great teams in the association to think that these guys can just throw it all together and in one season develop the chemistry and the work ethic to become a champion. So well, I, I, I know you say that as far as champions, period, but in the East, yeah. what great teams are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the East, um, I think people are going to be surprised 
with the resiliency of Miami. I think Miami's going to push for a top mm-hmm. five to three seed um, because I think Dwayne Wade, if, if there's nothing that can give him some little spark to give his career two tough years of work, it's got to be this. Like, if you don't want to bust LeBron ass now, like, you just don't have any com- com- competitor in you. Like, you've got I mean, to want to give it to, to – Here is my thing, right? I, I think they put some at, at number one in the East – it just, just the East. I mean, I mean, you said it's disrespectful to the team to see you get slap it together and have chemistry. That's what the last Eastern Conference champion did. Three, what, three, four years in a row? Uh, no, they slapped they, it no, together. They, they, they didn't. They, I mean, they got, they got. No, well, well Beelson, they, they didn't have chemistry, you know, right away. Yeah. But that they still made it to the finals though, to, the first year. Yeah, the talent that they put together was so good that they could win games ugly, even when the chemistry wasn't there. And in this situation, right. and it was I don't think, and it was I don't think, I don't think a totally healthy uh, LeBron, Kyrie, and Love at this moment is as good as a totally healthy big three that Miami had in their prime. Not at but, all. But at the same but the time, East got weak. in the regular season, the East. First of all, like Jimmy's about to say, the East is weak. It's the regular season. Nobody's really going to play any defense, so I think this team might run off a lot of wins and possibly get the number one seed, and then when the playoffs start, maybe some of the defensive deficiencies that we all think they're going to have might start to show up because, you know, you know what the the saying is about playoff basketball. It slows down a little bit. You know, teams are playing harder defense. Of course, we got to throw the Chicago Bulls uh, in there, but – that's another situation where we don't know if Derrick Rose is going to be healthy for a whole season. If Derrick Rose is healthy for the whole season and he's playing like, you know, the, the, the little bit we've seen him play with Team USA, then, you know, that could be your, your, uh, your main competitor for the number one seed. Indiana basically blown up with the injury and with Lance PG-13 leaving. PG-13 ain't there. Lance is spitting 16 yeah. down in um, so Carolina. I, I, I still think it's, it's between uh, Cleveland – Chicago and, and Miami. I, th- I, I think would probably even with Derrick Rose being up. healthy, Chicago's going to have the same problems they always have. Yeah. Like, and that's and getting score. buckets outside yeah. of yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have somebody in, I, I in Kyle now that you can go down there to to try to create a, a bucket. But, you know, Powell that's always, feel like he being also, a female. yeah, he also has that moniker of being a little soft when it gets a little physical down there. So, I mean, we'll see how those yeah. guys gel. How, how but, it should be interesting, that, at the very back, least, back at the to top the, of the Back conference. to the actual trade, because I wasn't, I wasn't done. The trade, you know, I like what the Sixers did. They talked with 10 minutes, said. though. They, they, they managed to – You, I mean, you voted me, but they managed to squeeze their way up into a trade situation where they really didn't belong. So kudos to them, and I like what their front office is doing. So I'm hopeful that in the next two, three years, we see something great in Philadelphia as far as basketball <laughs> is concerned. Um, That's the last topic, though. Minutes, he asked yeah. you about Cleveland, though. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Cleveland Wolves. They, 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 uh, they made it do what it do in terms of the decision. And then you know, Cleveland, like you say, they're they're in the East. But the comparison that Dad just made with the with the big three in Cleveland versus the big three in Miami in their prime. First of all, Kevin Love, Kevin Love can't. He does not defend. Uh, Kyrie Irving uh, and, and, and Deion Waiters, and none of them do is defend. They have a defender. They have two and a half defenders on their entire roster, and that's LeBron, uh, Anderson Verjao, and, and, uh, and an old man in Sean Marion. Marion. So defensively, they're not what Miami was. Can that can no, that no, change? At the, at can the, the culture be changed? All right. Can I, let, I was can about I, to let, say, let it's definitely a culture thing because, you know, there's people on that team athletic yeah. enough to be good defenders oh, yeah. if that mindset oh, yeah. crept in. So, I'm not. All right, here's my thing, right? Now, let me, let, me, let me go over each thing. In terms of the Sixers, yo, I've let never me, seen me. a team literally clean house the way they did. The person <laughs> with the, the longest tenure on that team is Michael Carter-Williams, who's the rookie of the year. How is he that the most tenure in your whole squad? That is amazing. That is look. I've never seen in any sport someone clean house the way they have. I wonder how he feels coming back. Like, yo, I'm playing with this. But anyway, so shout to them because they're they're making all the right moves in terms of moving forward. Um, 
Minnesota, I think they came up a little bit. They got, you know, Thad is a pretty good player. They got two number one picks if, uh, you know, Bennett could turn his career around because it started off kind of slow. But I think they got something considering they weren't going to get anything like a lot of teams do. Um, in terms of Cleveland, I don't, I'm not saying they're as good as Miami, but the entire East was stronger when Miami's big three got together. They're, they, I mean, the East is completely weak now. With Indiana falling apart the way they did, um, with with Brooklyn aging the way they uh, – there is no one other than Chicago to compete with Cleveland. And Brooklyn um, and lost also, Paul like Pierce. Said, yeah, and I, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, you know, the East is so terrible. Like the best the, – the, the second best team in the East literally might be the Wizards. Really might be the Wizards. Um, so I think that they can absolutely win the East. And I think they can win the East with on a runaway tip, like, you know, five, ten games. But I think when they get to the finals, that's where it's going to be a problem. And another thing I like about this as Yo. opposed to the whole Miami Big Three is they actually fit better than Miami did because LeBron and D-Wade, for all intents and purposes, played the same position. So, mm-hmm. you know – it all depends upon how Kyrie plays off the ball. That'll be telling. When we watch him play off the ball, if he's able to pick that up, they can actually fit better. And now they're surrounding him with you know a bunch of shooters. So who's the two I guard? Think that who's the I think Kyrie is like a thirty-five percent catch and shoot guy. So yeah, I mean that's not just threes. That's just catching and shooting. So he's not really used to it. But mm-hmm. I, it, it, I, it can come together. They, you know, that's what that's so, what that, playing, that's my thing. My practicing is, and playing it's not, games. It's not for. just. It's not just their talent. When you look around the East, like, Indiana imploded. Like, Indiana was that team that was supposed to give the heat or whoever a run. And, you know, uh, their center right. pretty much became feminine. Uh, PG-13 is gone. You know, Lance took that bread and spit in 16. So it's like, yo, they really have no one other than now maybe D.C. And if it, and Chicago has just as many ifs as Cleveland. So I think they absolutely will. I predict they will win the East, barring injury. And I think they may gonna they're gonna lose in the finals though. I, I think they'll who's, win the uh, I think starting, they'll win the East in the regular season, either, so. no doubt. Hold on. I think they'll I think they'll win the East, no doubt, as far as regular season record goes. Like like I said, once the playoffs mm-hmm. come, if you still have the other two top seeds still healthy, then they might run into a little problem in the playoffs. But like you saying, I think in the regular season it it could get kind of ugly. They mess around and win like sixty games. Maybe. That's what I think. They may win 60 games. They're going to run away with this thing. And I think even in the playoffs, I I think they may have a tough time when it gets deep into the playoffs, but I think they'll they'll make it through the playoffs as well. I just think that when they play a team out west, you know, I mean, you know, and you never know. Somebody's going to have an amazing season, but the East, just looking on paper at the East, I can't remember the East being this bad. Yeah. Who's going to compete with them? Carmelo and, um, you know, the Gunner Bull? Not this year, at least. So, I mean, that, that's the thing about it. So, you know, shout out to them. Also, shout out to Minnesota because they got something out of it. You know what I mean? They weren't going to get anything. To get two number ones as well as yeah. that, like, you know, that's three That's three of your five right there. I mean, you know, they, they got, got Rubio out there. young talent and some guys with some very high ceilings. They're just in a brutal conference right now. So, hopefully those guys are young enough to play, gel together, and, and be able to wait it out while these dominant teams get older. Um, as far as the 76ers go, like you guys said, I'm, I'm, I like what they're doing because I think when you are, like a lot of people talk about rebuilding, but they don't really rebuild. They think, okay, let's get a couple of pieces, and, and you know, they think they're going to get over the hump that way. This is a total teardown. Like they gutted this house, and they're just going to rebuild the entire thing. Thaddeus Young was the last person who has any kind of real NBA experience to really play on that team and now he's gone. So, you know, there's a lot of people who are a little impatient about this. Going forward, next off season, they have no more excuses. Like, the, the teardown is complete. They have no more excuses. It's time for the rebuild because if they don't start in the next off season, then I'm going to start to be on board with some of the impatient fans and, and wonder what they're doing. Like, they have a few well, more early picks yeah. coming up, a few, few more first-rounders. They could even trade some of them for some some already proven talent. They're going to have plenty of money to try to lure something there. Maybe not the super-duper stars in the league, but they should be able to put together a really good team for a really long time. And I, I like how they're going about it. Fans will understand eventually. <laughs> Shot the tissue with a tape. It says the Sixers. Cue up Nas, destroy, and rebuild. Yo, um, exactly. speaking of uh, – 
those Chicago Bulls and the ifs they have, we have the homie on the line who's a big-time Bulls fan. Let's see what he has to say about this whole conversation. Tobias, a.k.a. Roll Tide, what's good, brother? Hey, good, good. Roll Tide. And I'm not like Frank, you know. I'm not, I'm not crazy like Frank. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love Frank. What do you think about this talk we're having with the Eastern, man? What do you think about this? Uh, One, I think that everybody's overvaluing what Minnesota's got. They say number one pick. Mind you, people, this ain't like getting LeBron the number one, like LeBron and Dwight Howard back-to-back, number one, or whatever, and Shaq. I mean, mean, Wiggins for Wiggins was a thing all season. Wiggins was supposed to be the next LeBron. Yeah, but let's be honest. Anthony Bennett, I heard someone, Bill Simmons, call him notorious DNP. But now he's supposed to be this great piece, you know. Well, he got his yeah, shape. Yeah, okay. He got shape. He, he... Shell shock, yeah. man. He could be good. Shell shock, man. But my thing yeah, is, so... though, Tobias, if they, if they, if they, I mean, it's not saying they got a lot, but they weren't going to get anything. They, honestly, I thought they should have gone after the Clay Thompson thing but and go to state, but that would be my thing. But I can see what they got there because they paint themselves into a corner where they didn't offer Kevin Love the full five years. So uh, even though later and, uh, later in those negotiations reports were coming out that they, you know, that they added Clay Thompson to that, but I heard from other sources that Golden State wasn't willing to part with him. So and you know they what, were basically honest, saying that a lot of the stuff they heard wasn't true. And to be honest, if I was Golden State, I would have done it. If I was Minnesota, I would have taken it. But right. they would, but but he protects Steph Curry, <laughs> and that's what other people don't look at. Because he defends the other team's best perimeter player because Steph Curry can guard a court, you know. And, uh, <laughs> let's just be real here. Uh, but the thing is, people are underestimating how good Dwayne Wade and Chris Boss were and still are because they may yes, not they have are. that big dominating oh. center. They may not have that big dominating center, but when they uh, molly walked my Bulls that year when Derrick Rose won the MVP, they were trapping like crazy. They reminded me of those first three Bulls teams where those guys were trapping and just running. That, that's what they did. But but people forget the thing with Kevin Love. Will he turn to Chris Bosh to stay in the corner and wait for his cookie and take the blame that Chris Bosh did? Let's be honest. Whenever Miami lost, they blamed Chris Bosh, the guy who totally not played his game for the betterment of the team, but he the one that took all the blame. Oh, you you make a uh, you make a great point. Now shoot threes anyway, so he's gonna say you make a you make a great point though because if this team doesn't live up to expectations, Love is going to be the one who gets the blame for it. So he needs to prepare himself in that situation. So uh, that's just the way it's going to be. I'm not saying it's going to be fair because most likely it won't be. But Love is going to be the scapegoat of all fans, media, or whoever. If this team doesn't live up to Blame the white guy. And plus, also, to see what happens. Now, I wish my boy could have got another shooter. I would love him to get Lance Stevenson so I can get his own shot on the wing. But LeBron will have to guard him in the playoffs again because Kyrie can't handle Derrick Rose. Let's just be honest. We all know it. And Deion Waiters is not a defender. So that will put more on LeBron. And we know LeBron really don't want to do all that. So unless Kyrie gets better on D. I think they will because they don't have a choice. But I'll say Personally, this real quick. I don't think LeBron can do it on a consistent yep. basis. You throw him on Derrick okay. Rose for Four a quarters. few series and important times, then, yeah, you know, he, he's frustrating him a little bit. You try to throw LeBron on him for the whole game, Derrick Rose is going to solve the puzzle eventually. Yeah. And that's a wrap, man. See, and, that's, and plus, he's matured as a player also. I think he's matured. Yeah. But I'll say this real quick. How about Alabama Ooh. Crimson Tide? I kind of touch on them. Don't let right. anybody read to the – the quarterback situation, that ain't the issue. The issue is those horrible quarterbacks they had last year who couldn't play the ball. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but uh but but with the quarter but with the quarterback situation, part of it is that statement of throwing Blake Sims a bone who's been there four years, who actually been at just a little bit longer than Coker. Because how can you it's like if the guy's been at just a little bit longer, of course you're gonna know more than the guy who showed up two weeks ago. Right. So so I think Saban's throwing his Blake Sims is bone, but we all know Coker has more talent. But that's why you, you have – but I believe that if Alabama doesn't show up that secondary, it doesn't matter who's that quarterback. And I'm saying that as a fan. 
Uh, well, speaking of that, you know, uh, Fred Perdue is going to be on uh, probably in about 10, 10 15 minutes uh, to talk about his games of the week. Unfortunately, Roll Tide didn't make it into the top four this week. Well, you, well we're going to have three big games of the week every week and whoever Miami's playing because he actually uh, he's a Hurricanes insider now. So we we probably won't get to hear anything about the Tide, but I'm pretty sure their games are going to make the games of the week several times this season. So keep it locked in, Tobias, man. Thanks for your call. We appreciate Peace, it, man. as usual. Bye. Peace. Thank All you, right, man. Tide. Roll tight. Hi, guys. All right, and before we do get to uh, Fred Purdue about uh, this college football kickoff week, let's talk about the story that just grew so many legs in the past week and a half. Last week when we were on the air, um, uh, me, B. Austin, and, and Hank from uh, from uh, Imaginary Players, we had talked briefly about uh, 50 Cent and his challenge, his ALS, I'm sorry, the way he put it, his ASL challenge to Floyd. First of all, how are you going to call Floyd out for reading and you speaking all dyslexic on the on the video? But anyway, <laughs> you know, everybody knows by now that he called Floyd out saying, if you can read a page of a Harry Potter book, I'll donate $750,000 to your favorite charity. Uh, this caused some questioning by some radio hosts, uh, The Breakfast Club up in New York, Charlemagne, actually played a clip of Floyd Mayweather attempting to read some drops when he made an appearance on their show. After this video came out and went viral on several different platforms, the whole literacy issue and Floyd Mayweather came up, and we had the conversation with folks all week. Our conversation isn't really going to revolve too much around Floyd Mayweather, but around people who, you know, had something to say about it, most notably the people who defended the fact and justified the fact that Floyd Mayweather has trouble reading as a 37-year-old man, and it's okay just because he has millions of dollars. So before we talk about that real quick, let's let's hear <laughs> the actual drop that Floyd tried to read <laughs> on the Breakfast Club. It was actually a 10 second drop um, when Charlemagne read it, but Floyd had some problems with it and had to do several takes. I'm not even sure if he ever got it, but here it is. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I, I, I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your stripes, your, okay. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio. For the show, your stripes movement to support hiring vets. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your stripes movement to support. Hi, okay. I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I'm I'm Floyd I'm Floyd Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your stripes movement to support hiring vets. Go to the show, yourstripes.org. Go to the show, yourstripes.org. Go to show your stri- Go to show your stripes.org. Go to show your stripes.org. A website, a website that connects veterans with employees and helps business businesses. Okay, the website that connects veterans with employers and helps businesses find candidates. With the best training, I'm Floyd. I'm Floyd uh-huh. Mayweather, and I've joined Heart Radio for the show. Your Stripes Movement to support higher investment. Okay, okay. All right, that that was it. And actually, we got something great. We, we actually got some exclusive footage of a, a second drop he tried to read. And, you know, with something for the kids. This is Floyd again. You know that. Murray had a little lame. Murray had a little lamb. Murray had a man. How many lambs did the bitch have? Hey, this shit is frustrating. Oh, fuck! <laughs> I know we had that part. Um, all right. That that of course that was just a little joke at the oh, end. But this is really not. 
a joking matter. Um, what do you guys think about the notion? There's so many people out there defending Floyd. Like he got two hundred million dollars. He don't need to know how to read. I mean, personally, yo, know, everything is not about money, man. Reading is one of the most basic, one of the most fundamental educational components that any human being can have in their life. Now, I'm not. I don't think Floyd Mayweather is just straight up illiterate, but it's obvious that, you know, he's reading probably on a grade school level right now. And I don't care how much money you have and, and what you've done in the business world, you and your team, that's just not acceptable for me. And I think it's kind of disgusting for people to try to make that defense. You know, uh, what do you guys think? Great cash, homie. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I I was engaged in some of the same discussions that you were, um, <clears throat> Dev, and 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 some that are were independent of you. And and the thing that really really bothered me was the number of people from all different walks of life that chose to support um, this whole thing and defend this. Uh, as if, you know, the, the, I, I, for God's sake, I talk to educate people who teach our children who said, well, he doesn't need to read at a high level. He can count. He's making money. He doesn't need reading in his chosen profession. Um, that was probably the saddest. Uh, thing to me and and you know my response to those people I chose to laugh it off uh, make very poignant jokes rather than cry uh, because it ain't cool to cry on social media about these <laughs> things um, but it was really 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 sad um, I think Floyd definitely is deserving of a JoJo for this um, and, and in, in a typical Floyd fashion his response to the people was to post a, a series of three checks that totaled $72 million, which was his earnings for the year. So his response was, and, and at the top of caption, I don't need to read, I can count, as if to sort of reaffirm that notion that because he's making millions of dollars, it's somehow okay that he reads at the equivalent of a challenged third grader. Um, I, I, yo, I don't even, I don't even know where where to go with it, brother. Like, I'm disgusted. I'm shocked. I'm appalled. <clears throat> more so with the climate of the people defending this than even himself. You know, he should. Yeah, be I mean, that's, he should want to read. I mean, that's how it is for me, B. Austin, because you know. We know about a lot of athletes who grow up on hard times, a lot of guys who don't finish school. So it's not like it's a super-duper surprise for me in the first place. Not there, not that there's excuses for it, but there are reasons for the way things go down sometimes because as sometimes when we're talking about athletics, whatever sport you play, that might be all you know in life. You know what I'm saying? But at the right. same time, right. I think if it's not a person like Floyd Mayweather who likes to be brash and to, you know, braggartly and, and, you know, he wants to floss his money and show this and talk about his business and all that kind of stuff at every turn he gets, I'm not sure this type right. of thing would have become so big. So on his part, like I said, I'm not really that surprised. That's why a lot of our conversation didn't actually revolve around Floyd per se just the people who were defending Floyd, the educated people who were defending Floyd, not being able to read too well just because graduate, of that money. Graduate I really degree. don't think. Graduate I don't degree. think. Yeah, I, I, I don't think money, you know, should be just. I don't. I don't. I don't think that should come up when we're just talking about basic, fundamental, fundamental education. Is. I, I don't I don't know what else to say, man, because I've exhausted everything I had to say in those conversations. It's it's just weird to me to see yeah. people speaking that way. 
I, I have I have some other thoughts, but definitely want to want to get to the brother Jimmy, and 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 hear him because my my position even dives into a deeper social construct of why Floyd, who is branded as kind of a shucking and jiving, ignorant Negro, splashing, splurgy, caricature of a successful athlete businessman. Like, that's what he's portrayed as. That's what he markets himself as. So it's a whole nother level and a whole nother set of implications to see him in a position where he can't read. Like, here you have the guy who will take out $3 million in cash and put himself on camera and just count it. In, in front of the camera for the sake of counting it, or have mm-hmm. 32 different, you know, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar cars that he'll just show you, or take these expenses, all of these things to call attention to himself, and then celebrate the ways in which he makes money, and this is something that America as a society, and particularly the black community, we're we're divided, but there's a large number of us who are even educated that support that. Because of his talent in the ring, we support his behavior outside of the ring. So now we see this guy having, the, we have the perception of him having a serious literacy issue. Like he never represents anything of any positivity to me outside of his talent as a boxer and pugilist. Like that, that can never be denied. Right. Who and what he is inside the ring and, and, and training to be that can never be denied. He is, he is indeed great. But when we compare and contrast him to other African-American athletes of the past who stood for something, your Bill Russells, your, your Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's, your Jim Brown, your Magic Johnson's even, who, who wasn't the most literate of brothers but didn't stand for, you know, what Floyd stood for. And then, you know, lastly, going into his own sport, Muhammad Ali, man. Muhammad Ali was a brilliant brother who used his loud mouth to call attention to positive things and stand for something. So if you compare, if you combine that with the illiteracy, yo, I have a major problem with this whole thing, man, because of what he All represents. Right. Jimmy, didn't you say uh, that you, you thought there was a way he could have flipped this whole thing or still can? Yeah, I got some bars for it, man. My first question is this, though. Like, when I heard that, I was worried about him. I was like, yo. What happened to that? Listen, man, like, yo, there is no, first off, let's just start from the beginning. You should have left 50 alone because you know he plays dirty. Y'all were somewhat, I call them were close. brothers, so you know that he has ammo on him. And according to 50, who did an interview um, with Angie Martinez, he was like, yo, I, that was a quick joke. He was like, he know, he said, I know things about Floyd because of our relationship that can change the way the entire world looks at him. So you should have left 50 alone. Um I do think he can read. I think he has trouble reading. Um, and even 50 said in that interview, like, he knows Floyd can read, but he know, also knows he has trouble reading. That's why he made the joke. But the people that defend him based upon the money he has, that is the biggest joke to me in the world. I died laughing. And I was in some of the conversations you guys were, as well as others that I've seen. But, I, I mean, I knew that would happen, which is why he put the checks out in the first place. He was playing to a certain sect. And he, he did what he had to. I thought that he should have came out like, look, I have trouble reading. I'm going to donate to this charity. He could have brought awareness to people who have trouble reading or who suffer from dyslexia, whatever the problem is. But he tried to flip it a whole different way. Um, but the whole time that he runs with this, the money team, my money may, I mean, it's a sign of insecurity anyway. So now we know what he's insecure about. I mean, the dude, the dude has, like, you know, issues. Some will say that's how he things. markets himself. And, and that's true. He does market himself that way. And the funny thing is, he was allowed to make more money. Floyd has always been one of the best pugilists in the world. When he was pretty boy Floyd Mayweather years ago, because we've watched his entire career, he was a dominant defensive boxer just as he is now, but his paychecks were smaller, a lot smaller. Once he put on this whole thing of money may and he started cooning, his checks went up. That's by design, ladies and gentlemen. That that that's you know, he's not allowed to be a humble you know, uh, pretty boy Floyd and just fight. He, he's not allowed yeah, to do that. Talk to him. They want him to coon. Talk it. To him. So this, this is a lot deeper. And the thing about it is, you know, you can coon all you want to. We're going to keep paying you to keep portraying this image. The funny thing is, 
Um, and I hate to compare anyone to Ali because Ali is at the top of the food chain. Him and him and Bill Russell at the top of the food chain when it comes to athletes who show any sense of social responsibility or get the big picture. So it's kind of unfair to compare any athlete to them. But the fact of the matter is that's who he's always going to get paired, get compared to because he's the best boxer of our time and Ali was the best boxer at that time. But like B. Austin said, Ali knew there was a bigger picture. And the funny thing about it is. Muhammad Ali was treated worse by mainstream media than Floyd is because he was considered more dangerous. Floyd isn't dangerous to anybody. He's basically selling poison. I mean, you don't want to you know, break it down, to be honest. But with that being said, you, listen, the problem is people worship money, right? They worship money. So when they see the money, they excuse everything else. But they don't even understand that Hello. you're never rich until you have something money can't buy. I'm giving you guys Cuban links. You gotta take this free jewelry, but you know message. That's what they don't get. Money doesn't money isn't everything. Most of the people that we revere and we love weren't people of great means. Think about that. Even from an African American standpoint or just from a historical standpoint. Most of the people that we look up to, we study them in the history books, they weren't people that have a lot of means. But they were people that stood for something. I'm off my soapbox, man. No I doubt. Wanna, I wanna touch on something that Deb. I want to touch on something that Dev always brings up when it comes to social activism and celebrities and activists. It really doesn't mean anything until there's a perception, at least, of you taking a risk to stand up for something you believe in or the disenfranchised people that, pe- that, that you're associated with. Even though Floyd may have been playing with it just for the sake of a, a media ploy, for him to do what you suggest and take this and admit his flaw and donate to a charity and call positive light to himself, that would have been a media coup. He would have been, that would have been an amazing thing for him to do, even if his motivations weren't, you know, weren't genuinely, I want to help or whatever, but to be painted in that light, paint that picture of him, that would have been amazing and missed the opportunity. Why? Because he's so indoctrinated into shucking and jiving and cooning that there's nothing else for him. And the amount of people that give him credit even for the business decisions, I find that hilarious because it's like they don't even open the book and read past the first or second page of their hero to know that it's really Al Heyman who's the brains behind Floyd, to know that it's, it's, it's uh, Leonard Ellaby who is the brains behind Floyd. You know, to know that these are the gentlemen that work these deals. And I see people say, well, there's never work, been a boxer. Work his leverage for him. Things that Floyd, he's, he's such an amazing dude. There's nothing amazing about what Floyd did. Floyd is the most talented boxer in the world. So it's to be expected that he can command 200000 or seven seventy million million purses or $200,000 for appearances or, or, or $200 million in total net worth. Why? Because of his talent, not because of Leverage. some great business savvy that he has. He has a great team around him to capitalize and monetize off of his branding, his image, and his talent. Yeah, and we talked about that. We talked about the Austin, the whole leverage thing, you know, because people throw around the word genius, and that irks me a little bit. The whole leverage thing, when when you're the best at what you do in the world – uh, you know, you can leverage your talents into other things that will, you know, be of great means to you. And throughout history, you know, there have been some people who didn't use that leverage. But when you use it, I'm not going to call you a genius for it because, frankly, in today's day and age, you're really not going to find anybody who's not leveraging their brand the way that it can be leveraged. So I think, you know, the whole thing with that being some uh, – some something that we really don't see and, and, and we get to call people smart and even go as far as calling people geniuses because of, because of it, I think those days are over, man. Because, I mean, Jimmy tells people that every week yeah. on the show. Like a lot of these athletes right now, you know, they're athletic as hell, but they're brands before they're even athletes right now. And everything they do, everything they say is tied back to what's best for their brand. That's why it's such a big deal when somebody messes up and does something crazy in the media because you're worried about what effect it will have on your brand. So I, I don't think it takes all kinds of genius to leverage 
you know, your talents into money. And like we said, money is Floyd, everything. This is a message that's, that's, that's a to fundamental Floyd, skill. Man. Floyd Mayweather, learn how to read, man. Learn how to read at a 12th grade level because I'm going to tell you, brother, man to man, there is nothing more rewarding than reading to your children. There's nothing more rewarding yeah, than reading to your children. Man. Like, it's like, you know, the thing about these athletes, I mean, statistically speaking, He's probably going to go broke. I hope I hope that he doesn't go broke because of the image that he puts out there. He can't go broke. But then again, once he stops fighting, how can he, like, if he's still going to be money man? It, it, it basically costs money to be him, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? It's going to be hard for him to of fall course, back. He's a business. He's a they business. Don't business. Don't so, money. But I'm not even talking about from a, yeah, I'm talking about just from, like, a, from an upkeep standpoint for him to keep portraying the image in his brand. His brand is spending bread. So... Yeah. You know, you got to be careful, man, because, you know, that stuff can be taken away from you, man. You know, right. basic functions, reading, ra- reading, writing, mathematics, things like that, you really can't take that away from somebody, man. And, I, you know, I'm not trying to judge this man. I Hopefully he gets it together, but he had an opportunity here to make a powerful statement, and he nixed that to keep cooning. Because, you know, at that point, what could 50 have said? He would have squashed him, too. And I'm like, damn, that backfired. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he could have just killed the we, whole game with that, man. We got somebody on the digital because we got to get to Fred. Uh, Fred's hey, waiting Fred on the line on. to let's, talk let's to get, college let's football. Let's get the homie Shane on, man. Let's get the okay. homie Shane on. Shane calling. He calling from Missouri, man. Yo, man, he's dunking, the tanks and, he's dunking the tanks and guns out there, man. What's going on? How close are you to that? <laughs> oh, man, I'm uh, I'm like 10 miles away, but, uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in a good neighborhood. I'm out here. I'm out here for my kids. They're in a good neighborhood. Okay, okay. Make sure you stay away from the military and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It's ridiculous out here, man. It's, uh, you know, know, I'm uh, I'm, I'm in a public place right now, so I really can't say what I want to say. You got you, got you, got you. I think this is, man, this is all concocted, man. It's all concocted. The dude no, had yeah, yeah. so so much rage in him, you know, and decided to, you know, do what he did. And then you have, you know, everybody in that neighborhood, you know, going through the uprest. And then it just permeates the city. Past three months or the past three weeks, I mean, you could, you know, you know, you think the summer's hot. I mean, you can feel it in the street, in the, you know, in the at dusk. So, well, you, you know, I'm just well, out well, here you maintaining. You don't have to tell me because I'm a conspiracy huh? theorist, and I can go for the next hour and tell you what my my big conspiracy and how I think the whole thing is set up. But I'm gonna leave that alone. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna say that for another time. I'm gonna say that for another yeah. time. But uh, what's I, going you know, on I, sports I, wise? You know, sports wise, you know, I heard the money may thing. I I just think it's a damn shame. You know what what was this pop doing, man? You know, I'm uh, you know, I'm a father of two little girls. Getting hot. And 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 ever since you know they were born, I've been reading to them. And you know his fa- his father was busy, um, but that's no excuse for letting your child, uh, you know, not uh, not gain that uh, not gain that knowledge, not gain that uh, that fundamental you know, education, skill, basically. Be- yeah. Exactly. I mean, I, you know, I, I was so surprised and. I mean, you you can look at it from so many different angles. You can look at it. I mean, you know, they're building more prisons than schools. They're, you know, I mean, it's it's all, all around. But yep. I mean, you know, the fact that the fact and I and the, the last caller, the fact that you know he posted those checks, you know, good for you, dude. But guess what? You know, read War, Have you read War and Peace? You might be a better fighter. Um, you know. Uh, it's Talk to just, uh, yeah, it, it's just perplexing, and, and it, it, it's a shame because now, all you know, by him posting those checks, all of the, you know, all the little little sociopaths running around, the young boys, who, <laughs> you know, grew out, grew up with no father, no mother, and you know, they're looking up and to the big boys either. and the fences, exactly, and but they know they dance, you know, how to count, and. uh you know, I think it's just uh, it's it's just a product. It's a product of America, man. Like how uh, yeah. 
you know, the product of the uh, previous call was saying how Ali back in the day was looked at as a thing because he could read or because he was intelligent, you know. Wow. And now how that's the reverse is it's disgusting. But yeah, it definitely it's, is, man. You know, it's, it, it's the way of the world these days. And, uh, you know, I, I really, you know, I'm hoping the dude's, you know, got three tutors up in whatever mansion or whatever, you know, wherever, you, you know, like, look, this is how you conjugate, uh, you know, here, H-E-A-R is this, H-E-R-E. You know, I mean, hey, Jimmy, I saw your post post 50 put, you know, except E-X-C-E-P-T. So, you know, no, no one's perfect, but it it all starts from your upbringing. You know, I mean, people's problems, you know, start from the upbringing or they're brought about biologically or physiologically or, you know, traumatically. And, you know, this whole thing could have avoided, you know, uh, Mayweather Sr. Yeah, you know, you had the money, hire a tutor. Well, you know, when you're kidding in school, I mean... You know what? And, and, you, and you bring up a valid point about, like, you know, his father, and it seems like this thing is systematic in terms of, you know, their family. I doubt, I doubt he could read a drop. Um, yeah. And I, I just hope that they stop the cycle, man. Like, it's ridiculous, man, because education is so important. That's one thing that can't be taken away from you. I tell people all the time, um, yeah. you know. No, no, everything can be taken away from you. All your money, your possessions, your land, all that. But the one thing they can never take away from you is your education, which you, which you've got. Yeah. You know? Or your so, dignity. Or um, well, you, you know what? Absolutely. You know what? Floyd just had his dignity snatched. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but he has not. He had, he had an opportunity to to make that use it in uh in his favor, but it's obvious that he um has never read the Forty Eight Laws of Power or the Art of War because he failed. Exactly. Um. Exactly. Yeah, but Shane, we got it. We got to get our college football expert on, man. But you know, thanks for the call. Yeah, thanks man. For all the support, brother. And um, yeah, you no know, stay, stay, no stay, stay, stay safe out there, man. We know, we know you out there. Uh, stay safe out there. All right, good brother. Yeah, mo- most definitely. And you know, uh, I've been getting, uh, you know, a, a couple different drops, man. Yo, this cop's gonna get off, and uh, it, 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 it's, you know, it's gonna be scary in a couple months, man. Not, not just here. That's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we about to have a bunch and, of these uh, things, man. We already know what it is, man. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's wild, man. It makes me sick in my stomach. It's on, on both sides, you know. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Thanks for the call, though. Sure, we got to move on. But thanks for the call, though, good brother. We appreciate it. Thanks for the support. No doubt. Well, hey. All right, take care. All right. Yeah, right, man, Shane brought so, up a good point. Like, you know, his pop got to take some blame, too, man. One quick thing before we bring Fred on. Have you guys no ever doubt. noticed when we see Floyd in, like, the Forbes magazine in terms of being a highest-paid athlete, he always has zero dollars in endorsements? Yeah. That's another, that's another now thing. We, I mean, people want to throw now around we know this. Why. People want to throw around this Yo. genius word. How are you a genius in all the money Yo. you're making? He, you're not, he's not, maxim- from, he's not maximizing from the potential. Sport. So, come on. Yeah, he's not maximizing his potential. Stuff. Miss me with I that just, genius. I, just, um, I swear on everything. That was my next. That was going to be my very next point. Great minds, uh, great minds. Uh, the point that I'm going to make. We make all, all, make all, all of his revisit. money in salary. He makes all salary. I'll, I'll, all I'll finish money. my last They're point once we finish talking. To, damn, I'll finish my last point once we talk to Fred. Let's bring Fred on so we can get Fred on. All right. Look, Jim, hold up. That, that very last point from me on this, and this just to those people who were defending it especially the black people. Y'all got to remember that there was a time in this country where black people had to sneak to read and had to hide the fact that they were educated. So FOH with all of that, he got money. He don't need to learn how to read. Let's Absolutely, bring on. Dev. Dev, uh, let, me say, let me say one quick thing, Dev, because I don't want to bring it up. After, after we get off with Fred, I don't want to talk about this no more. I just want to say the one thing that um, people always compare him to Sugar Ray Leonard, and I just finished reading the Sugar Ray Leonard biography. Sugar Ray Leonard went out of his way to work on his diction, his reading, because he wanted to maximize opportunities. And the fact that he did that is how he's still able to get opportunities like to this day, and he hasn't boxed in 20 years. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I agree with everything you said. They used to keep us from reading. They took away everything. The only thing they gave us was the Bible. And that, never mind. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let's bring Fred on. <laughs> All right, well, Fred, we are sorry, brother. That went overboard. 
But uh, our college football expert, uh, he's a Miami Hurricanes insider for Sports Talk Florida. Fred, what's going on, man? How you guys doing, man? Very man, interesting we, we good, man. It. Very interesting. We revolutionary. We revolutionary down here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we get going? to talking about that oh, kind yeah. of stuff, man. It just go overboard, overtime. What do you mean to have you waiting like that, bro? <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. All right, look, man. Well, let's get let's your, let's get your opinion, Fred. If you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, real, real quick before we start, what's your opinion on this whole thing? I feel like for me, uh, first off, Floyd Mayweather went at the wrong guy. Wrong yeah. guy. Um, yeah. Like Jimmy said, he doesn't fight fair. below the belt on this one. Um, and 50 Cent will do everything. Has he not seen Ja Rule, Young Buck, uh, the game, and basically every other member of G-Unit? Mm-hmm. He threw them all under the bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah he definitely went at the yeah, wrong guy. And, and I also agree with you, Jimmy. Uh, basically, I'm sorry, but if you have no endorsement money, but all you can show is the money you've made out in your sport, that's a problem for me. Um, which is Floyd good, Mayweather, which that, is that good, but what does it mean when else? you're finished? It's good Floyd that you Mayweather get all that because he's the top everything paid. Else outside your sport. He says yeah. everything else is outside the conversation to deter from the topic that is at hand. No doubt. All right, well, look, man, go. It's let's go into your world. It is college football kickoff week. I'm watching a game right now as we speak. Um, give us your games of the week. You know, that's how we do when you come on weekly during the season. So, week one, give us your uh, your your four games of the week. Well, first off, I got to give a, a nice shout-out to Kenny Hill, the quarter, the new quarterback at Texas A&M. I know this isn't the game of the week, but right now he's 21 to 26 for 241 yards, touchdown, two touchdowns. He's killing him. And he looks a <laughs> lot like Johnny Manziel right now. So, big, big ups to him right now. He was one of the top quarterbacks coming out of high school. So, he must, he's doing his thing right now. And uh, South Carolina's in a lot of trouble. But uh, my games of the week, I start off with, with the Miami Hurricanes. You have the Miami Hurricanes playing on Labor Day, uh, Monday. Where they have the Louisville Cardinals on the road. They just named their starting quarterback uh, this past Sunday. And Brad Kaya, for all that don't know, uh, Brad Kaya, his mom is Felicia from – from the movie Friday. If you don't know who Felicia is, make sure you go watch that movie. You will get a good laugh. Crack it. <laughs> <laughs> and Louisville fans, <laughs> Louisville fans got a hold of that information and decided to say, put up lots of tweets and other other things saying, bye, Felicia. Um, and they're messing with Miami's quarterback right now. Um, Miami has a they, they're going to go into this game as an underdog right now, right? As, uh, last time I checked, they were three-and-a-half-point underdogs on the road. Um, you get Duke Johnson back. Uh, running back, you, but you lose your quarterback, obviously, from last year. Stephen Morris has moved on to the NFL. He's with the Jacksonville Jaguars practice squad. Uh, good luck to him. Um, Stacey Coley is a guy that you're really going to want to watch out for in the passing game. He's a sophomore, one of the top wide receivers. Coming out of high school, made a big impact last year. Uh, I really like what I saw from him. Uh, last year as a playmaker, he's about 6'2", 6'3", um, very fast. Uh, Philip Dorsett's coming back from injury. A lot of guys are actually coming back from injury, and we got a couple injuries on the defensive side, and Rayshon Jenkins, he's out for the year. Uh, this defense is going to have to get better. No Teddy Bridgewater to deal with, but uh, Will Gardner was the backup, and now he'll be playing for the Louisville Cardinals. They do have... Uh, Coach Bobby Petrino, the same Bobby Petrino that left Arkansas, uh, that also left the Falcons uh, to go back and do some other things and mess with other people, um, girlfriends and all of this, improprieties. Uh, he's, a, he's still a quarterback whisperer from all accounts, so we'll see how Will Gardner comes out. Uh, this game is going to be a very tough game defensively. Louisville is very stout. They have some NFL guys up front. Miami's going to have to run the ball and protect Brad Kaya because he is a freshman. Uh, we'll have to see if he can actually throw the football. Um, Jake Heaps is the backup right now. Uh, Ryan Williams was the starter until he tore his ACL before the spring game uh, back in April. So he's right now at about 85% back. Uh, we might not see him this year. He is a redshirt, a redshirt senior, so we may not see him at all this year. Um, but for me, I, I've already – had my thoughts on the Miami Hurricanes and some of the things that I've kind of had an issue with. I think Miami's going to go into this game uh, with a chip on their shoulder, but the quarterback position may hold them back. Uh, 
Uh, I think this game is going to be a close one with Louisville edging them out because of the home field advantage. Cool. What's your next game? Uh, Florida State, the defending national champions, they are going out to Texas to play at Jerry World against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Uh-oh, uh, hide your crab legs. <laughs> <laughs> hide all the other food, too. Um, I think Jameis might be hungry for another national championship. And the rest of this Florida State team, uh, I think they're going to be very stout on defense. Uh, you Guys, you can look out for on defense, Mario Edwards Jr., uh, one of the top guys coming out of high school as well. He actually was the number one player about three years ago coming out of high school. Uh, very, very good defensive end rushing. Uh, Eddie Goldman, defensive tackle. A uh, couple guys on offense you will want to watch out for. Uh, Carlos Williams, uh, senior running back. He's, he's a former safety, 6'2", 230 pounds. Very fast. He will hit you. Uh, and he's a good kick returner as well. Obviously, we know Jameis Winston, quarterback, Heisman, uh, Heisman Trophy winner, and all of that great stuff. Uh, Rashad Green, wide receiver. Uh, Nick O'Leary, the grandson of Zach Nicholas. Um, Got to say, this team's loaded on offense, but the offensive line is the, play, is the spot I really want to focus on, mainly uh, Cameron Irvin coming back, left tackle. He's going to be very key. He could have went to the NFL and chose not to. Uh, if they if, – that offensive line can protect Jameis. I really see this offense really taking off. And Oklahoma State, they don't really have a lot of big names right now, um, but they are a very – they're going to be a tempo team. Uh, Coach Mike Gundy uh, ran – who actually was, the, was Barry Sanders' quarterback, actually, back in his college days. Uh, they're still running the same offense, uh, any, air raid. Any man. Style. And uh, I really think that team is going to – they're going to compete for about a quarter and a half, maybe two. After halftime, you can expect Florida State to ramp it up and really start running the ball a little bit. Uh, they're going to be new at wide receiver. A lot of guys are going to be coming in after losing Kelvin Benjamin to the NFL. Um, Christian Green might be a guy you want to watch out for as well. Also in the secondary, uh, P.J. Williams and, and Ronald Darby, uh, two NFL caliber corners, very, very good at press, being a press corner, uh, can run with anybody. And uh, I think Florida State is going to win this game by, by about 20 points. This game is going to be very ugly towards the end. Is Mike Gundy going to scream in the press conference? <laughs> oh, come after him. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. <laughs> about 45 now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, about that. Um, it's going to be an ugly game, man. I really think Florida State is really going to be hungry, and I think they're hearing all the talk about them not being able to repeat. Uh, I think this team could be a team that you watch out for towards the end. I don't think Jameis will win a Heisman again. And the thing about winning a Heisman, usually you're going to have to do even better than you did last year, and it's a media thing. The Heisman is one of those things. It's a media award now, and you have, with all the things off the field, Jameis is really going to have to clean it up off the field, and it, it's the perception of the media people. Somebody's going to emerge, and it might just be Kenny Hill. I'm watching the South Carolina Texas A&M game, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing from him. He might be a guy to watch. Okay. What about uh, Wisconsin LSU? I know that's one of your games. Wisconsin LSU, man. I I really have some questions about Wisconsin. Uh, And LSU at the quarterback position. You have Brandon Harris and uh, Anthony Jennings vying for the quarterback position at LSU. Uh, Les Miles is going to play both quarterbacks in that game. But Wisconsin, they, they're going to go with another quarterback instead of Joe, Joel Stave. Uh, they're going to go with uh, Tanner, Tanner McEvoy. He was their former free safety. Uh, I'm still wondering what are, what are they doing at quarterback in, in Wisconsin, but uh, when you have running backs like Chris Clement and Melvin Gordon the third, you don't really need a great quarterback. You can run the ball and pound those guys in. Uh, Wisconsin has an NFL-sized O-line. When you have guys that are – that are averaging about 6'6", 330 pounds across the line, and your backups are about that too, uh, you really don't have to throw the ball much. You're just going to, as they, as they call it, they're going to caveman. They're gonna call, they call it the caveman up there. They're just going to just start bum-rushing guys uh, and just driving guys into the ground and just mm-hmm. going to run the ball. Um, LSU is very – they're a quicker finesse type of defense, and I, with that being said, they're going to be a little undersized going up against these guys. So You just call, I think them, LSU, you just call them soft? <laughs> so what? I might be. They're fast. Nice they're way. just not big. They're not big, man. It's, that's the thing with, L, with these SEC teams. They're, they're, they're speed now. They're going more spread in the SEC. 
It used to be a league where all they did was run the ball, but now it's, they're still running the ball, but they're doing it in a different way. You're using the short passing game to be your pseudo running game. And with that being said, you're going to be dealing with smaller linemen, smaller linebackers, uh, some bigger safeties to run around and handle these tight ends. It's, it's turning into the NFL. And it's also turning into flag football with all these flags. I wish they'd go away. Go away. Uh, give me LSU. Um, yeah, the game is good. Give me, a, give me LSU in that game, 13, 13 to 10. 13 to 10, LSU. All right, Ooh. you got any final thoughts on the uh, the game that you're watching now? I know you mentioned a few things about it. South Carolina better learn to stop the run because if they can't stop the run, this game's going to get ugly really fast. <laughs> All righty. And there you have it. And um, if you guys are listening for the first time, we will have Fred – uh, on weekly to give us his games of the week. Um, he is a Miami Hurricanes insider for Sports Talk, Talk Florida. Fred, let everybody know how they can get in contact with you on the Internet. You guys can reach me at, on Twitter as usual, F Produce Sports. Also, you guys can reach me, reach my work at uh, Sports Talk Florida. I'll be tweeting out a lot of my work from now on. I uh, just jumped on, man. It was It was supposed to be a surprise, but the cat got out the bag, so – uh, I'm happy to be with this new with, with this new venture. Loving my job right now. Um, looking forward to going to a couple hurricane games on the on the docket, man. It's, it's going to be a, a very fun year. Um, right. I just I got to say also, um, college football is going to be different this year. So just be be very very patient with your team. Be very patient. Cool. All right, well, man. Thanks again as usual. Definitely congrats on the new venture. Uh, we will talk to you next week and get your games of the week then. All right, guys. Go okay. Kings. Thanks, right. Fred. That's Fred Purdue, everybody. Miami Hurricanes insider for Sports Talk Florida. All right. Well, Jim, man, let's, let's yeah, roll let's this last cool half Florida. an hour out of that NFL, no, man. Let's talk, let's talk some NFL for, for like 30. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about oh, the well. dish. Well, before we do that, y'all can uh, reach, y'all can check us out on our website, warroomsports.com, to call in and speak with us about any of today's topics. Dial the Digital Extreme Technologies hotline at 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. Okay, it's time to talk football, yo. And shout out to Skyview Kevin, who's trying to defend Floyd in the chat room. Um, he says that the, uh, the BS he puts out, his coonery is an act. Um, that's you know, even worse. So I, I guess what? That's, that's yeah, oh, you're you saying it's, oh, you, no, it's, it's, it's okay to coon if that it's means not true. You sold out. <laughs> Basically, means, so if your cooning is an act, you're a sellout. Then you're a coon and a sellout because at least a real you know, it coon is, what it is, is a coon. Is, man. <laughs> a real coon is a coon. If you acting like a coon, how low is that? Yeah, Skyview, Skyview, I understand you in Vegas. You trying to take up for 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 the home team, but yo, first off, he ain't from Vegas. He's from uh, Michigan. Second off, yo, he's a coon. I mean, he's a talented coon. He's the greatest boxer of our generation. I will never take that away from him. He's still a coon. And, and you know, giving back a little bit of money, that doesn't stop you from being a coon. You dig what I'm saying? I mean, Donald Sterling gave money back and got in de- Anyway, let me stop. Let's move on, though. It's time to, uh, you know, it's time to talk about the NFL because it is almost football season. The NFL rap is brought to you by Stitcher Smart Radio. Watch how I do this. No Floyd. You can now hear our show, The War Room, on Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your computer, your iPhone, Android phone, BlackBerry, or Palm phone. If you have a BlackBerry or Palm phone, kill yourself. The latest episode is always available for you. No syncing needed and no memory or storage wasted. Downloading is easy. Stitcher.com slash The War Room. That's T-H-E-W-A-R-R-O-O-M. No money team, because I read that perfect. Stitcher <laughs> Smart Radio. That's the smartest way to listen to radio. Let's talk football, gentlemen. It is almost here. <laughs> Let's talk Let's about the one B. Austin always takes up for. Check down Charlie, a.k.a. Sam Bradford, tears his ACL again. What is this going to mean for the Rams who are uh, on their way up? The defense is tough. They're in arguably the best division in football, but they lose their signal caller. What do you guys think about that? 
Man, first of all, it's great. well, first of all, uh, Shane Gray, out, uh, who covers the Rams for uh, ES for 101 ESPN, uh, he was going to come on with us and, and talk to us about that tonight, but we had some, uh, you know, some issues setting that up, so we'll have him on later on. But you know, Sam Bradford, man, his luck right now is is I don't know, I can't really say his luck. I mean, because he he this is the same ACL that he injured last year i believe it was week seven and he was on his way to having the best season of his career when that happened um so you could possibly say that if he got hurt midway through last season i mean i know modern medicine is getting these guys back in the mix a little faster but he could have been out there a little too early just like you know robert griffin the third was last year even though he didn't have any recurring problems with that knee he just had like some problems with his accuracy um the this is of course a, a giant blow for St. Louis because this is a team, even though they're in that stacked division that we call the NFC West, you know they were poised to compete. I don't know, you know how relative the word compete is when you're playing in that beastly division, but they have a hell of a defense. Um, you know they have some good talent, good young running back in Zach Stacy. They were getting everything together and with all the draft picks that they've had they they've had sort of a rebuild. Maybe not a total destroying rebuild like we spoke about with in basketball with the Sixers, but as much as you can do for a football team and they've done a lot to rebuild that team and Sam Bradford was like the last piece that they had to get right before they knew whether or not they could compete. And by all signs last year he may have started to be that quarterback that everybody thought he was, but at this point, I think he may be done with it. He has one more year left on that contract, about $16 million, but I don't see a way that they're going to end up paying him that when he's going to have missed the better part of a year and a half of football action because of his knees. So what do you see, B. Especially when he doesn't throw the ball past two yards downfield, I guess. That's the way that team, that team is constructed um, to a point where they can bring in, you know, I hate people say this because it's like people just say this all the time. You can just bring in a veteran. Like, you can bring in any veteran, you're going to win. But honestly, they can bring in a game manager. That's what I want to say. Bring in a game manager and compete because the defense is rock solid. Their special teams are solid. I mean, that's all they're missing is a game. It's someone that won't make mistakes. Well, well, well sense of because, you know, you, you, they had – the names were floating around. Maybe they would try to make a move for for Sanchez in Philly. Maybe they were going to try to make a move for uh, uh, Kirk Cousins from Washington. And this was more speculation than anything that a source said, but people were talking about maybe Ryan Mallett since the Patriots do have uh, Garoppolo now that they really like. So Mallett might be – the odd man out if there was a trade to happen. However, Jeff Fisher said he's going to roll with Sean Hill. Um, he said, you know, that's his guy. He knows the offense. And, and that was the whole thing with uh, Mark Sanchez because Schottenheimer's over there, Schottenheimer's son, who was his offensive coordinator in New York, and, you know, he basically knows what they're doing over there. I think it's kind of cliche when they always say, well, such and such knows the system. I'm pretty sure you're not running the exact same stuff that you're running that you were running on another team. Because, therefore, when you face that team, they're going to know all the signals and all the verbiage and all that kind of stuff. But according to Mark Sanchez, he's very happy to be in the position he is with Philly since he's playing so well in the preseason. Um, I think he's looking to possibly, if he gets a chance to get in and play this year and still looks that good, you know, he can up his ante, up his stock for next year somewhere that he'd rather play. Yeah, so he, doesn't wanna, he doesn't want to play for his former offensive coordinator. But this is this is a crazy situation, but Jeff Fisher thinks that Sean Hill can hold it down. What are your thoughts on the situation, B. Austin? You think Sean Hill can hold it down? Um, much like Jimmy no, said, he's not a bum. This team is poised. This mm-hmm. team, no, he's not. This team is poised to, to take a step. And if they were in another division, <clears> um, I would say that they would be serious contention for a, a, a nice playoff spot. Um, the challenge with them is they're, they're not better than Seattle, obviously. They're probably not better than the Niners. And are they better than the Cardinals? 
So even with Brad with uh, Bradford, they were probably competing for a wild card berth by having a great record as the number three team in that division. Um, now with Sean Hill, can you win those games? Because you're not going to be you're not going to beat uh, Seattle and win the division. You're probably not going to beat the Niners. Um, so this is a tough blow for them. This is a tough blow for them, and it, I saw it, Bradford make awesome. a surprise last year as well. But at the same time, I still think Bradford was pretty mm-hmm. much an unknown since he was coming off an ACL. So we really don't know if they were going to be any better with Bradford. But, I mean, I, I get what you're saying because I agree. I mean, it's a tough blow for me just because, okay, this is the guy that you invested a whole lot of money into because we all know Bradford was the last to get those ridiculous rookie quarterback, you know, number one pick contracts. Um, so there's a lot of money invested in them. I, I think the tough blow is more so the fact that you paid this guy all this money and he can't get onto the field. Not really like, oh, we were poised to do this and now we're not because Bradford's down. Because we had no damn clue what Bradford was going to do in the first place. So, you know, right. and, him and, come and, in and be you know, just Jimmy good. always gives me grief. Jimmy always gives me grief because Bradford – hasn't had been checked down Charlie. But essentially, Bradford had, um, shout out to uh, Jimmy's brother Kyrie running at tight end, uh, me at wide receiver, and uh, our esteemed co-host PJ at the other wide receiver. So that's probably the Listen, reason. Man, I know why you take up for him. You, 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 you take <laughs> up for him because he's Native American. I get it. But at the end of the day, man, boys check down Charlie. It is what it is. I mean, I Yo, mean, he I, was I, throwing I, to no one in particular. Accurate. I mean, he's, I've seen a lot of cats throw to no one in particular, and still even try to stretch the field. I mean, but this, this the thing about it. The oh. thing about it is this is his, this has been his mo going back to high school. It's not new that he got in the league and started doing that. He's never stretched the field. He's afraid. Well, I can give him this. At least he knows how to check down. You know what I'm saying? Some dudes just can't read a defense, and but that's a different story. Um, this was him last year. Seven games he started last year before injuring the ACL. Uh, he was completing 60.7% of his passes, uh, 14 touchdowns against four interceptions, and he had a 90.9 quarterback rank rating, which is which was at the time the highest of his career. So it looks like he was making strides because the year before that he did start 16 games, uh, completed 60% of his pass, Passes through for 3,700 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. So it was just a matter of this team who in the last couple of years have been hovering around that 500 or right below it, you know, if they were going to make the next step with their fifth-year quarterback, and now he's on the shelf for another year. So, man, I think Jeff Fisher is a good coach. I think he has a good coaching staff. So, I mean, I still think they'll be a competitive team. Whether their competitiveness equals wins when they need them, that's a whole different story. But I don't think they're in bad hands with Sean Hill. He has he has uh, experience. He started 26 games in the yeah, he's NFL, not a boss. He's most not for Detroit. A boss. So uh, we'll see if he can hold it down. And if the coach has the confidence that he doesn't have to run out and grab somebody, then, you know, that that indeed is a vote of confidence. But it also may mean, look, we don't really want to give up any of these early picks to go grab somebody who's just going to be a stopgap when they can keep their picks and possibly flip them to move up in the draft and get a quarterback next year. So I don't know if it's a yeah. legitimate, genuine vote of confidence or is it just, look, we're just going to have to roll with them this year because we're not giving up picks for – Mark Sanchez to come in and. No, I agree. I, I don't think they want to. I don't think they want to get a stopgap. I think they think he's capable of playing with everything else that they have on that team. It's right. just a matter of him not making mistakes. So they're going to try to like you know change you know how how they were going to approach the season. I mean I think yeah. it would have been conservative with Bradford as well, but now they're going to be get even more conservative and, and hand the ball to the running back Zach. So I mean, and play good defense, and that's what they're going to do. But speaking the of fantasy all those football you know, players, I mean. Zach Stacy, move him up on your board oh, yeah. if you haven't drafted yet. But the only the only the only issue with that is now oh, yeah. Zach Stacy facing him eight and nine in the box. But um, 
Speaking of all those picks that the Rams have, they got them from the Washington football team, um, and they and Washington got the quarterback, Cornball brother Robert Griffin III. But it seems that RG three is uh, losing the fans a little bit. That he was the savior to uh, to everyone. He was going to bring them a championship. They were very excited about him coming there. But um, you know, so far he hasn't really lived up to that. And now the fans are just starting to turn on RG three and calling for cousins and calling him all kinds of names. And you know, so and you guys are down there, so you have your finger on the pulse of what's going on. What do you think about mm. what's going on with RG three? Well, Look, this uh, conversation years between. Ago. There was pictures there was pictures of this gentleman, sacrilegious, blasphemous pictures of this gentleman as the black Jesus Christ. Now they, 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 they the face of a mustard seed is gone. Like they don't believe him. And I tuned in to one of his preseason games most recently, I think. Uh who are they who are they playing to? Baltimore. Baltimore. Ravens. I mm-hmm. saw one series. And it was all I needed to see. Why? Because his habits are terrible. His footwork is still garbage, which is something that no matter what system you're in, you still can develop your footwork and your fundamentals. He, his footwork is terrible. He's staring down receivers, and he's jumping to throw 10-yard crossing routes into coverage. Yo, dudes, fun, fundamentally, he's not there yet. And I believe he still has all the talent that Washington ever thought he had. But, like, his fundamentals are horrific, man. Staring down receivers, having problems going through his progression. I, you know, he, it, it, it looks bad, man, because the, the development, he should be further along with his development. You know, he, he really okay. should be. Well, as far That's as the, the fans go, like, you know, I listen to a lot of sports radio here. And like B. Austin said, like two years ago, Robert Griffin III could do no wrong in this town. I've already spotted personally, not what I heard or what I've seen on social media. I've already spotted personally in the last two years uh, four license plates, uh, either Maryland, D, uh, Washington, or Virginia, with some kind of variation of RG3 on the license plate, which is too much. Um there were times his rookie year, which was a very good rookie year. I mean, for rookie years, I'd say he had a great rookie year. Um, I've already discussed to, ad nauseum, like, a lot of the reasons for the success in his rookie year. But there were times when you'd hand the ball to Alfred Morris, he'd break six tackles, score a touchdown, and the fans are chanting RG3 as, as Morris is running through the end zone with the ball. The love was strong, and it was from everybody. Don't want to always make things into a racial thing, but there is a little bit of a divide. I think the black people, because, you know, they, they you know identify with him a little bit more. The love there was a little bit stronger than the other side, and it's consistent right now with the fans that are jumping off, because if you listen to a radio broadcast down here in D.C. and the callers call in, it's basically – you know, the people who aren't African-American, you know, they call in and they're just brutal with the guy. The African-Americans are starting to question him and wonder whether he's the best quarterback for this team, but you still hear in their tone and then what they're saying that they don't want to go all the way in on him yet because, you know, they're holding on to that last little bit of hope. So I hear them, even, but even to hear doubt in their speech is so surprising to me because of, you know, what the kind of stuff they said in public, you know, when he was a rookie and even last year when he was having a year where he was struggling a little bit. Um, I was listening to a broadcast the other day and a guy called in and they were, the, the conversation was about whether they should trade Kirk Cousins or not or whether you would trade Kirk Cousins. And the guy called in and said, why would you trade your number two if you're quote-unquote number one as a steaming pile of feces? I n- never heard them in this town Yo, talk they like that about right, and and they're not used to that here. Like in Philly, that's a conversation that you're going to have on radio. You're going to say that, and they're going to engage you. In D.C., that was a little too much for them, so they hung up on the guy because he called their quarterback uh, a pile of feces. Even you know the the guys on the radio station had some doubts, but they weren't ready to take those kind of calls. Where we're from, we're used to that. We call in. 
and say somebody's a steaming pile of feces, they're going to engage you. They're going to have that conversation. They might even agree with you and say it themselves. Um, it, it's crazy. And the mechanics and the, what, what B. Austin talked about, it's crazy. It just doesn't seem that he's a confident guy right now. Um, he exudes confidence on social media when he's talking to all of his doubters, but when you watch him on the field, the, the mechanics definitely aren't there. But to his, you know, to, in his defense, which this is not going to sound like a defense, I never really thought the mechanics were all the way there in the first place, but people got excited over the excitable stuff, and that stuff never really mattered to them. They never stopped and thought about what it might look like when we stopped this dinking and dunking, pistol formation, play action, receivers running wild, wide open over the field, and try to play more of a big boy style with this quarterback, nobody ever thought about what that would look like, and we got a glimpse of what it looked like last season, and it looks like either he's just struggling now, he's in a slump, or he just doesn't have it. So I'm really interested to see uh, how this is going to play out with him on the field and with the fans in this town who showed him unconditional love two years ago. A lot of people calling for Kirk Cousins, but we know that story. You know, the, the backup quarterback is always the most popular guy in town when, at least when your quarterback's not a legend. Like, certain guys, you don't, like when Peyton Manning is playing, you don't even know who his backups are half the time. The, the, the racial divide is because of the perception of the role of quarterback in America. You know, quarterback, pitchers, point guards, those are, those are positions of leadership. And we don't look to you know, generals and certain positions in past uh, centuries that would be those, those legendary positions of leadership because we don't look at the American military the same way. So a position of leadership, the quarterback is symbolic. So for a black man to hold that position on a team in America's sport, you know, that's still a big deal in the minds of a lot of black people, you know. And so I think a lot of black people look at the, the importance of the symbolism and the fact that, you know, a generation ago it was very difficult to find a black man playing that position versus now today. So that's kind of where I see the racial divide and the social implications. Um, and then people people are given their opinion. You know, as we mm-hmm. often say, it's the sheeple, the lemmings. You know, there's a lot of lazy thinkers. The media was celebrating Robert Griffin. So people here in D.C. thought it was okay to hop on the bandwagon because, of course, we're hearing it on ESPN. Look how great he is. Now that that isn't there and the chinks in the armor are more apparent and the media is not is a little bit more hesitant to give all of that praise and credit, now it's causing doubt because they never analyzed him from an actual football standpoint anyway. They right. just looked at the sensational plays that were on And you remember, B. Austin, I wrote a, an, an article – I wrote an article about RG3 yeah. and the Redskins week one last season, and I was pointing to some of that stuff. And, you know, I was a, you know, every, I was a, hater a hater to everybody. And that's the thing. Like, when you do this for a living but people find out who you root for, they find out I'm an Eagles fan, and they think everything I say is from an Eagles fan perspective, which can be, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Eagles fans hate me as well because I'm too honest about that team. So it's like I can't win, like with the right. people who who knows who I root for, but um, I, I don't know, man. It, it's it's just something. He's one of the players that I'm most looking forward to watching this season to see what happens because I, he believes his own height. Yeah, I, 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 I never really thought it was there, and you know, you keep hearing these these things. People keep saying like. Well, he his M.O. coming out, his scouting report was he's a passer who happens to be a world-class athlete who can run. That was the narrative on him. To this day, people still keep talking about his intelligence. Now, you know, I don't want to call the dude dumb. I'm like every on an everyday level outside of football, you know, I'm pretty sure he's not dumb. But when you see some of the decisions that he makes on a football field, I'm like, how long are they going to go with this intelligent quarterback you know, persona, when he's showing you the very opposite of that. But I think that's just normal 
media posturing, a black well, man who can speak the king's yeah. English automatically makes him an intelligent quarterback, and that, I don't think that's the that, case from his play. I'll even give I'll even give the brother the out, which I like to take pot shots at, at Robert Griffin uh, for for the fun of it. But to be honest, I'm not really going to question his intelligence in the sake that you know IQ is low or high or whatever. When you are that athletic and you are not taught the position from a cerebral standpoint, you mm-hmm. depend upon the athleticism to compensate for the fact that you haven't developed the skills and the foundation to play the position. So but B, when the we heard reason... all of this, he's a pocket passer. He never was. He didn't even have a passing tree at, at Baylor. They didn't have a passing tree. They weren't running plays. They only ran three routes. But listen, so never a had lot of the reason why they went out of the whole pistol thing and, 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 and he wanted to be more conventional was because he and his father – you know, told the coaches that. You know, he wants to be well, they're buying, Aaron Rodgers. The but, and you know, they you, know, you, you they can't know be Aaron Rodgers if he's just not Aaron his Rodgers. career in jeopardy. Yeah, yeah they, but they, they, they holding on to the ball the in the pocket, lie. holding on to the ball in the pocket as long as he does will put your career in jeopardy, you know, just as much as running outside of the pocket and, and all that kind of stuff that he was doing in well, year one. Listen. So either way, he's in trouble. We got a couple minutes left. I want to get you gentlemen's opinion on uh, something I see going on in the entire league. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in, in the last say decade or so, we've seen a lot of rookie quarterbacks just thrown to the fire. Like, look, go ahead and, and, and learn the game. Um, is, is other than Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers was sitting behind Brett Favre, who you know had built his reputation, deserve it mm-hmm. or not. But now we see, um, you know, Matt Castle playing over Teddy Bridgewater. You see uh, Johnny Manziel being told to sit down for right now. You see Mortal. it kind of going the other way. What do you guys think about this? I mean, should they just throw the rookies in there, or are they doing the right thing by letting them sit sit down for a minute? I'm doing the right I, thing. I, I, yeah, I think they're doing the right thing. Oh, uh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say I think they're doing the right thing, especially for now, because these teams are basically telling you, okay, we're not – given up on the season before it starts. So maybe, you know, let's see what we can do from a wins and losses standpoint. Maybe this guy can learn from what's going on rather than just throw him out there because a lot of times you throw them out there and the situation is so bad that you can mess up their confidence going forward like forever for a very talented person. And you know when we talk about that, Shout we always think David about David Carr, Carr and, and what his, you know, the shot that his confidence and his body took playing in that bad situation down in Houston. So for some situations, I think if these teams get into a situation where, you know, they're immediately bad for, you know, four games under or whatever and it doesn't look like the playoffs are possible, then you might want to go to the rookie, you know, see what he can do, get him some experience moving into next season, kind of like Andy Reid did with Donovan McNabb. You know, once once the Eagles were terrible, that season with Doug Peterson, all right, you go now you throw the rookie into the fire, but not from week one. So I think these coaches are making pretty good choices on that. Um, yeah, man. All I can do is echo kind of echo Dev's sentiments. It is the the quarterback position is like a chess player. Although we as fans don't look at it that way, you're playing chess. And to step up from the college ranks into the NFL and the pro ranks, I think for a long period of time, front offices and even head coaches were succumbing to the pressure of the sensational branding and the big play and all of that, when in reality, fundamentals suggest that if you give a guy time to spend a lot of time in the film room and sitting behind a, a professional who's already playing the game and, and get to learn, I think you'll, you'll come out with more success. And as you say, you won't rob them of their confidence if they do meet with early, uh, you know, early challenges. So, yeah, I think it's the right decision. Definitely. Cool, Jimmy. I know, I know we got to go. I just want to, for the people who didn't see this, um, uh, Roger Goodell acknowledged that he didn't really get it right in the right, right situation. So the NFL has announced that they're immediately implementing a domestic violence initiative that calls for a six-game suspension for a first offense and a lifetime ban from the NFL for a second offense. We will talk about this later. Just wanted to throw that out there. Everybody stew on that. 
Jimmy, take us on out of here. You already know. Thanks for joining us again in the world, good people. Shout out to everybody in the chat room on Facebook and Twitter. Shout out to you, Sky View Kev. Oh, me and you have been arguing for the last half hour because you're still defending <laughs> the coon. Um, everybody, hit us up on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you as well. All the, calls who ch- all the calls who chimed in, thank you. But even the ones we didn't get to, because I'm looking now, we got like a bunch of calls we can't get to you, but thank you for all the support. Special thanks to Fred Purdue for joining us to give us his college football games of the week. Tune in next week, same time, same place, live right here on demand on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. That's WRSPN.com. Next week is our fifth annual NFL season kickoff show. We do our season preview and predictions, and you definitely don't want to miss that. So until then, enjoy your week, and we'll see you right back here. Be sure to catch our conversations, Facebook, Twitter, at War Room Sports, WarRoomSportsTV.com for all our video content, and WRSPN.com for the podcast network. As we always say, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance. Learn to read, and we'll see you chumps on top. www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it.